Hello there folks, I thought I'd do a video about my boat engine. I have BMC 1500 diesel. I've never done one about the engine and um, I'm very soon going to be starting to paint the area in the engine bay etc etc make it look all pretty. But that's the thing about bilges, they've got to be good and at the moment they're not. Um, so that's what we're doing, it's been raining for two days, I'm still stuck in the boat with this bloody awful weather. So I thought I'd make a video about the boat engine, so here we go. Firstly, please excuse the mess of the place. It's been chucking down with rain for days. The whole area is just like a bog. It's all muddy. I can't get on and off the boat without mud. So there's mud absolutely everywhere. Anyway, the engine is under here. Okay, here is the BMC 1500 diesel. Right. Now, I want to tell you what I know about this engine. From what I can make out from finding a previous advert of the boat was this dates back to 1980. Now I used to think that all these boat engines came out of cars that were either written off or were no longer used. But I later found out that BMC did actually make uh, engines for the marine industry, which makes sense because there's just so many boats with these on even till this day. Now I also believe that BMCs are still made in India, um, which is quite interesting to know. Um, but I think all these pattern parts that you get for them now, like this uh, lift pump down here, I hope you can see that, they're certainly not the same quality as the original, original ones, and I imagine they're probably made in China or something. Anyway, so I believe this dates back to 1980. The original advert said that it had been reconditioned, which does make sense because it doesn't smoke at all. And I also believe that when they reconditioned engines, they don't do the auxiliaries. So I used to think these were taxi engines, but they're not. The 1500 wasn't in the black cabs. I think the black cabs had the uh, two and a half liter one which uh, they, oh god, what do they call it now, is it a Commodore or something? These ones here, 1500s, probably came out of something like a Leyland van or something like that. I know the Allegro's and the Wolseley's had engines of this size, but whether they were petrol or diesel, I really don't know. So what exactly this came out, I really don't know, but I know somebody watching this video will, so please tell me what used to house the 1500 BMC diesels. Now these engines um, were used in so many different things, even the Minis had um, these Morris engines in, and right on the side here, I'm afraid I can't show you, it says MOWOG, which I think stands for Morris Workshop Garages or something like this. Anyway, enough of the waffle. This alternator here I upgraded. I think this one is 85 amps. The original one was either 35 or 45, I can't remember. That made a fantastic difference because I have one leisure battery and I have one starter battery and that is perfect for that. I have no problems getting that charged up. Behind this pulley is a relatively recent water pump which I got from Peachments in Brundle and it was the one uh, used for the higher boats and it was a lot more heavy duty than the one that came off. The one that came off looked like one off an MG or something like that. But this one I put on here is absolutely colossal. And it's, it served the purpose very, very well. Here is the raw water pump. Uh, I believe that particular model now may be obsolete. But oddly enough, these uh, little brass or bronze units, whatever they are, they're about 150, 200 pounds. So rather strange and I believe a lot of people with the BMC's upgraded these to a larger size however I've had no problems with this at all now some of these BMC setups are a little bit different um, this is the only one I've seen with a Bowman water cooler on like this if you look online it actually is listed as an oil cooler but it is the water cooler and inside here is a series of uh, copper pipes I believe and I can't remember which way around it is, but the raw water calls the uh, engine water, etc., etc. Okay. This down here 
is the um, raw water filter and you need that up here big time because of all the, the reeds and stuff. It's got four cylinders. The manual states that it would run at um, 4,400 maximum revs for a car and in the marine capacity it should be 2,000. I very rarely go over a thousand but this engine will rev up to about 1750 with the new prop on that I have however the um, last prop which had a different pitch would allow me to go up to 2000 revs but there really is no point because the boat has an optimum point and if you rev it too hard it doesn't go any faster it just sticks the uh, stern in more etc etc Okay, now I've obviously picked the wrong day to do this, but uh, I'm going to show you outside the best I can. Now, as you can see, this is a very, very tight fit. When this boat was originally made, it had a um, Ford 100E engine in. It had a petrol engine, believe it or not. Uh, just in case you're wondering, that's the water tank in there. With that kink in, I'll have to sort that out. So basically, this engine is called by the raw water coming up through here and then it goes through and cools the hot water in here now I do have um, a heat exchanger as such which is here but you'll find on a lot of other boats that don't have the Bowman that's 1972 though by the way you'll find a lot of them have a header tank attached here whereas this one doesn't now the only reason I can think why this is the case with this engine is because if you look at the room here it just doesn't have the room for it. So it is a tight fit, but I have to say this engine has been absolutely marvellous. Just before I forget, if you're wondering how you get the oil out of these engines, you have to uh, suck it out through the dipstick area. There's two dipsticks on this actually. There's one on this side and there's one on this side. This one was, must have been the original one when it was in a vehicle. I can't really access that. It's it's well, I it probably could if I had to, but it's really fiddly. But this one's a lot more accessible. It's behind the lift pump. Now to get it out, you just simply use a um, well. You can use a um, electric one, but I use a mechanical pump. I hope this shows up in here. And I got this out of um, Norfolk Marine, I think, uh, about about twenty bucks, something like that. And although it's a bit of a messy job, it makes it a lot easier. And I'd say I'd probably get about 95% of the oil out. Now I'll give you a better visual of what I was talking about with the pump. This is the pump here. This is actually brass. And um, it's, quite, it's quite a good quality one, to be quite fair. But be prepared when you use this. It can go horribly wrong and it can be a right mess. In fact, I actually managed to completely cover my mother in oil because she was standing behind me while I was pumping. One of the pipes came off and she got covered in oil. As funny as I found it, she's never quite recovered from it. But hey-ho, that's boat life for you. Now, I'll dig out some links. I'll put some links in the description if anybody's looking for something like this. But personally, I would go for an electric one. But whether or not you can reach a power point when you're doing the engine is up to you, basically your circumstances. So anyway, have a look in the description if you're after something like this. Right, well here she is. This is the uh, fuel filter housing. I recently replaced that because the banjo bolt there was was thread. That's the oil cooler. That's my gearbox. That's a Borg and Warner velvet drive. And there's your coupling there. I've got a double coupling there. And there's your stern gland. And it's raining and I'm getting wet. And I certainly picked my best day to do this. But that's just me I'm a bit nuts and that's my makeshift air filter actually because um, that's the way it came I might try and uh, dig one out one day actually got a question for anybody who's watching this and knows what they're talking about Borg and Warner velvet drive gearbox when it's hot very nice but when I start the engine up and it's cold it can be a bit clunky when I put it into drive I've checked the fluid it's, it seems a lovely colour and it's not low, so if you could shed any light on that, I'd be grateful because um, it seems to be a little bit noisy when it's cold, but when it's warm, it's fine. And uh, there's your injectors here, and that's your common rail. 
and then all your adjustments there are underneath this valve rocker cover here sometimes these gaskets need changing but they're only a couple of quid so there you have it and that's my exhaust system there running through and that goes onto a water box so it's very very quiet i can stand here and have a conversation no problem with the engine running so there you have it folks that's my bmc boat engine please like and share and if you have any comments please feel free to add them below